a symbol of my family's greatness. And now, with this crest and I are dying together. At another time and another place, I might have brought honor and glory to the House of Famine. But instead, I shall leave a legacy of decay and unspeakable horror. I record my days on the island of Save. In the year 1870, I was aboard my father's ship, the Clipper Lestrade, bound for the Americas. We encountered what was to prove tragic weather. Mr. Fallon, there.
rest with a bit of salvage of extreme value, Mr. Fallon. Hardly as palatable as food, but I'm sure you'll find it rather exciting. Yes, crest of salad. The crest from the stateroom. It's on all our ships, Captain. I'm quite familiar with the object. And if you will be so condescending, we'll put it to a useful purpose. be any banquet, Mr. Fallon, but tonight it'll seem like one. I'm not overly fond of fish, Captain. Tomorrow, see if you can find some game. I much prefer meat. Tomorrow may be better spent in exploration of the island, Mr. Fallon. There may be some life on this island, and if so, we'll be better off for having found it. So tonight, let's make the best of the fish, huh? Yes. Yes, of course you're right, Captain. You're quite certain that I'm a bit of an ass, aren't you, Captain? There's a yes or no answer to that, Mr. Fallon. I feel as though you have been bred to a set of standards that don't apply to every situation. By that you mean our present situation, I suppose. Our present situation? Yes. However, if you are indeed your father's son, Mr. Fallon, you have a strength which you are totally unaware of. And a strength that will rise up unexpectedly to meet any situation or any challenge. I knew then that the captain's tolerance of me was due to a deep and sincere respect for my father. And not just because I was the son of an employer. For the first time, I saw in the captain's face that wisdom and dedication peculiar to men who follow the dangers of the sea. But a strength that would crumble under the terror that was so suddenly forced upon us. Alan, you have no weapon to even combat whatever's out there. Whatever they would show me. That was a woman's scream. You're right. Human. A woman's scream. But we can do nothing about it. Storm has cleared the air rather nicely, I think, Magic. The dogs. They got out last night, didn't they? Speak up, Mantis. You permitted the dogs to get out, didn't you? Danger! Answer me! The dogs got out. You fool. You blithering idiot. You filthy incompetence. But you got them back, the dogs. They're all right. Something you're not telling me. What is it? No. I demand to know. They killed a woman last night. A woman? How could there be a woman? There is no woman. Where did she come from? Who is she? A woman? Then there may be others. There may be other people here. We've got to find them. Mantis, you find them. You bring them here. They may be pirates. We're in great danger. Go find them now.
be some means to keep the devils from my island. Not likely, my dear Count. Your island was made for devils. Who is speaking? There's no one here. Oh, you're quite wrong. <laughs> I am here. Where? Where? I can't see you. Here. Here in the shadows. Look closely. No. No, you can't see me. No. No. I can't see you. Then I'll come a little closer. Can you see me now? Now. That is much better, isn't it? Well, does my appearance frighten you, Count de Sade? Then permit me to enter your dimension. You see, I appear most harmless. <laughs> You have only to command me. 
However, I think it only fitting and proper that I leave a calling card. My calling card. A remembrance that you and I are always this close. Is your mind. <laughs> Break this way. Mr. Fallon! What, Mr. Fallon? It's part of a woman's dress.
Captain. The Captain is quite all right. He's been given a potion. The pain was most severe. What? You're quite safe now. You're in the castle of Count Lorente de Seyde. There will be time enough for your questions. It is important only to know that your friend will recover and that nourishment awaits you. If your strength will permit, the Count requests your presence for the evening meal. I am grateful. The captain is lying on a very cold floor. In his condition, pneumonia could surely occur. You must have accommodations. As I said your friend will recover, sir. The Count has seen fit to offer lodging and refuge. I'm not in a position to question the extent of his hospitality. If you desire to put the captain in your bed, by all means do so. I was sent to announce that the Count has elected to share his evening fare with you. An obligation I have now discharged. If you wish to show your lack of gratitude by refusing, then I'll relay your indiscretion. I most certainly want to meet the Count. If you would permit me a moment. Captain? Uh, I love me. I love me. our guest. Please, sir. The Count will not tolerate conversation during repast. 
You may tell the count he can damn well go to hell. No, it's all right, Cassandra. My apologies, sir. I beg you forgive me. We are not used to guests. And our countenance of standard has been somewhat blunted by our prolonged solitude, I'm afraid. Please forgive me. I understand. Reciprocal apologies are in order. I am indeed in your service. I am Aaron Fallon of the House of Fallon of Bath. settled into a depressing silence. He made no further effort at conversation. I suddenly felt some strange compassion to analyze my host. But all but a few salient and frightening clues eluded me. His face bore the sorrow pallor of a lifetime of dissipation. And his eyes held that familiar paranoid glint of royal inbreeding that left no doubt. Yes, my host was quite mad. And Cassandra, only a portion of the racking torture of her inner torment. This observation of unhappiness and despair was verified by the event that was so soon to follow. I feel ill. May I be excused, Your Lordship? No. You may not be excused. Tonight we have a guest, Cassandra. Tonight, it will be like the days when the Countess was alive. There will be talk, an exchange of personalities. Don't you find that refreshing, Cassandra? Tonight you can put your trivial babbling to one side and Mr. Fallon will talk. Yes, we'll listen to Mr. Fallon. that my ordeal has left me seriously taxed. I prefer that the delight of a lengthy conversation should not be tainted by my unfortunate weakness. Tomorrow, I shall see renewed strength. And I will eagerly await and be honored with an audience by so noble a person as yourself. Yes. Of course. Tomorrow.
these holes get quite drafty at night. Cassandra, this isn't necessary for you to show me to my room. I can find it all right. I must, Mr. Fallon. The count is this. I can make it. Good night, Cassandra. And thank you. But, Mr. Fallon. Good night, Cassandra. say you are mistaken. And secondly, the Count would not tolerate your being in this chapel. It's very sacred to him. He will not have it violated. Captain is not in his room. Where he should be, there is blood. I think he's been killed. Do you think I did it? Certainly not. Then take your hands off me. I have some fever of that, I'm sure. But I'm not given to hallucinations, and the blood was fresh. The captain's injuries were extensive. They may have reopened when he was moved to more suitable quarters. You did request that, did you not, Mr. Fallon? Yes. I'm overwrought, obviously. We're tragically short of medicines here, Mr. Fallon. But on occasion of emotional strain, I sometimes find the ocean air quite invigorating. May I suggest the balcony? his life, he was almost attractive. As it is, it's almost frightening. There are many things about this island that are frightening. And I think this castle, most of all. Frankly, I should be most happy when I've sailed and left it far behind. Fears have a way of diminishing with time. I think you'll find that's true, Mr. Fallon. 
theories I had no intention of testing, Cassandra. When does the next boat arrive? Boat? There are no boats, Mr. Fallon. We're in exile, sir. We've been severed from humanity. We're a cancer. We've been cut out. I don't understand. Truth is dark enough without learning about it at night. Tomorrow will be soon enough. Good night, Mr. Fallon. It was inconceivable that no ships came to this island. I felt that Cassandra was trying to add to my uneasiness. That she was closer to the Count than she appeared. She was a part of his evil. My bedclothes had been changed. All traces of the captain's injuries had been removed. There was a chill in the air and I was extremely weary. But sleep refused to come. I was suddenly aware of a strange and tormented sound. I was hypnotized by morbid fascination. I could not believe that what I was seeing was real. But somewhere in the deep recesses of my numbed brain, my reflexes reacted to the scene. very fast. Anne. Anne. Why did you try to kill me? See? She's dying already. 
as you would have me die. Die! Why don't you die? It was poison. It was. I know I'm right. The Count's never wrong. I know he's a pirate. not my imagination, but a very real happening. I saw a young woman being beaten, and when I tried to assist, I found my door bolted from the outside. I was locked in, unable to help. I will accept none other than a truthful answer from you. Farewell, Mr. Fallon. Since you've become a member of the Castle de Sade, I'm sure you have every right to know its secrets. Thank you. The story would begin with this portrait, I suppose. She was a beautiful woman, the Countess, and much loved by her husband. So much so that he insisted on marrying her, even when he learned of her terrible illness. There's no illness in the portrait. You're quite wrong, Mr. Fallon. It was there. The faint beginning traces may have escaped the artist, but not the physician. You see, Mr. Fallon, the Countess was a leper. Oh, my God, no. It was necessary that she be exiled. The Count was determined they should not be separated. So we came to this island, bought this castle. It should have been a story of love and dedication and sacrifice. But I'm afraid just the opposite was true. I can almost guess the rest. The Countess died very early, and the Count was forced to continue his exile because of his contact with her. That would have been endurable, at least, Mr. Fallon. No, it was much worse than that. The Countess did not die. She went insane. And in her madness, there was only one moment that she chose to relive. Her wedding night. Day after day, wearing her wedding gown, reliving her marriage. Eventually, it was necessary to lock her away. Are you saying the Countess is not dead? Yes. The Countess is not dead. And where the devil is she? In the dungeon. By now, the disease is quite advanced. Rather than face what she's become, the Count prefers to think of her as dead. This is most tragic. This explains the reasoning why the Count is a little deranged. It's worse than that. He's insane. Criminally so. Thank you. How are you involved in this? I matter very little, Mr. Fallon. I'm in the service of the Count as payment of my father's debt. I was a nurse. Now I'm not much of anything. I try to give some comfort to the Countess, but it's extremely difficult. To the girl you saw being beaten, her name is Anne. She was the hostage of pirates who once attempted a raid on this castle. She was mutilated and abused. She was left a mute. She's known brutality all her young life. First the pirates, and now the Count repeatedly accuses her of trying to poison him. Her punishments are cruelly severe. He'll kill her someday. 
I'm not very reassuring, am I, Mr. Fallon? I cannot solve the problem until I know it exists. And the new being. His name is Mantis. He's been a slave for many years. At one time, the Count was a great hunter, and Mantis was his gun bearer. He's completely loyal, and the only thing resembling normalcy in this castle. The Count is deathly afraid of pirates. He's rigged the entire island with all manner of traps. Yes, I was caught in one. Which leaves one last question. What if the captain? I permitted myself to lie last night. I don't know where the captain is. It's unlikely, however, that he's been moved to another room. Could they have killed him? Count has come to believe that all sailors are pirates. Yes, they could have killed him. There must be a way to leave this place. To signal a ship, or there must be. It's all right, Anne. He's a guest. He has a way of bringing things into proper perspective, Mr. Fallon. the child bordered on screaming hysterics. I had meant only to reach for the cup, but my movement came with more suddenness than I had intended. So, you have embarrassed our guest, Anne. Count, it was not intentional. I have suffered no injury. Please, I implore you, do not punish the girl. Since you have intervened, I will not be so discourteous as to override the wishes of a guest, Mr. Fowler. However, one must hold a firm hand to domestics these days. They're getting disturbingly lax and independent. Moreover, it is not proper that the Count be left waiting for his cup of tea. You may have mine, Your Lordship. Yes, of course. But it might be too sweet. You know how you indulge yourself, Cassandra. I'm sure it's to your liking. I was promised a conversation, and I intend to have it. Tell me about England, about the America, or any subject you choose. It would be good to hear a new voice. Yes, I do have a subject. The captain of my ship. I demand to know where he is. you with the beard. Oh, yes. Mr. Fallon, I'm grieved to bring you some good tidings, but the poor man died last night. Now, let's talk about England. How did he die, Count de Saved? Death is not a pleasant subject to discuss so early in the morning, and I did want our meeting to be pleasant. In fact, I demand that our meeting be pleasant. Please, Mr. Fallon, this can come to no good end. Another time. Please. Very well. We shall not mention the captain. But let me assure you I intend to know his fate. I will know how my friend died. Fallon, I'm grieved to think that you should entertain the notion that I have contributed to your friend's untimely demise. 
quite the contrary. I did everything I could to save the unfortunate creature. Thank you. 
काफी that we have supplies that could only have been brought in by ship. The tea, for example. The Count's tobacco. You said there were no ships. I've never seen them. I suspect the supplies are left on the beach somewhere. I've checked. Our larder is presently low. That means that any day or week now, a ship may come. Yes, it's possible. We could signal her some way. No, it's not possible, Mr. Fallon. Not so long as the Count is alive. What are you suggesting? I'm not suggesting anything. I'm merely saying that if there is an avenue of escape, it's being blocked by the Count. Cassandra, I'm not capable of murder. Murder is not a word to be applied to self-preservation, Mr. Fallon. I've never thought myself capable of killing either. I've condemned myself to whatever fate befell me. I'd almost forgotten that another world existed. But it does, and I want to be a part of it again. Is that too much to ask? Right or wrong or relative things, Cassandra. No. What you ask is not too much. But I am asking the same thing. So we have a bond together, you and I. So, Bridget Cassandra has taken a lover. You have denied me, yet you have taken that boy. Mr. Fallon, you have defiled my hospitality. 
I have given you refuge and you have become a thief in my house. Mantis, take them to the chapel. shall be locked away as my love has been. And together, you and I, we will mourn them. We will... Mantis! This is your day of reckoning, your highness. Mantis, stop him! I will kill you, Sailor. Leave the poor fellow lying there on the dungeon floor. Chain him over there. to a whole island, but you have only this room, you and the Countess. Behind that door, Mr. Fallon, she thinks it's her bridal chamber, and in a way, it's yours only. Goodbye, Mr. Fallon. Come, Mantis. It was as if I had been buried alive. had a voice all its own. Timid little sounds that came from the shadows. They swelled to a tumultuous throng. I closed my eyes and listened to a symphony of a black mass. But suddenly I was aware of another sound. A noise that had no place in this concert from the tomb. <laughs> I pray that she would be unable to reach the latch. For a moment, my prayers have been answered. The hand withdrew through the opening. would not permit me to visualize 
what face belonged to that dead arm. But as the Count had said, it seemed that fate was destined to spare me nothing. <laughs> very commendable that you're able to perform your duties as a nurse, Cassandra. I had rather expected to find you in some corner bemoaning your lost love. The wound is very serious, Mantis. Use it as little as possible. Yes, that's right, Mantis. Use it as little as possible. But first, we must get rid of that pirate. We can't leave him here, can we? No, of course not. Come, Mantis. Drag him out. This whole unsavory business is becoming quite unsightly to me.
I'm not certain that I haven't crossed that thin line that separates the sanities. Not so, Fallon. Now there's hope. Now is our chance to escape. Let's take it. Hurry, Fallon. There's little time. dominant part of the night. begin to search until tomorrow morning. We have an adequate head start. You're wrong, Fallon. Search will begin tonight. You hear them? Got the dog. this way. Quickly. We can cross the stream. Maybe we can throw them off. the river. We'll spend the night on this side. Cassandra fell into a deep sleep of exhaustion. And through the night I could hear the dogs as the count circled the island.
always let the dogs go. Get up! Get up! I can't. Come back! Come back! Get up, I command you! I can't. I can't move anymore. Very well. Since you defy me, I have no further use for you. some adjustment. But as our fears faded and patience for a ship to arrive mounted, we were taken with a feeling of exhilaration that never left us. After many years, there was happiness in the castle of Desaid, marred only by the death of little Anne, who had died from the ordeal of a water torture. Captain! 
come back. The captain's words were ringing in my brain. I could not believe what I had heard. Only when I looked into Cassandra's face did I know the truth. Leopard. Haven't you noticed, Fallon? The color of my skin? The color of your own? How long have you known Cassandra? The first traces were months ago, Fallon. I'm sorry.